When most people think about ants, if they think about them at all, ants are pests in the pantry or on a picnic. But here in Belize, the ant is the king of the jungle. They are constantly on the hunt. Swarming under every rock and lurking in almost every flower. So how many different kinds of ant species do you think are in the Belizean rainforest? <laughs> Well, right around here, I mean, there could probably be several hundred. In the tops of the trees alone, there can be dozens. Oh, that's a howler monkey. Excuse vertebrates. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought we were on Lost. Esaton hamatum. Mark Moffat. It's a army ant. Is a biologist. Inside there, we have the queen and her brood author, photographer. That's the oh queen there, that's her head and abdomen. And ant enthusiast. Oh, Ooh. yes. Almost from birth. I learned early that ants are controlling the world under our feet. Down there as an infant, I would watch them doing all these things that were very human-like, building roads, working together to collect food, Ants do all kinds of things that even primates, like a chimpanzee, don't have to deal with. Take the leafcutter ant. These insects live in societies of millions. You can actually hear them. You get to know their sound. It's the motion of tiny little leaves. And feeding all those millions of mandibles requires a lot of work. This is a, a tough job, and their jaws get quite worn down by it. Their jaws, however, contain a lot of zinc, so they're essentially living can openers that can uh, grab onto the leaf from one side, tear through with that other tooth on the other side, the way you use a little uh, portable can opener. A lot of these ants are carrying leaves with hitchhikers on them. That's right, and this was a, something that early explorers even pointed out. Why are these little ants climbing on top of the leaves and getting hauled along? Well, one reason is it probably costs the colony less energy for them to stand on the leaves than to walk themselves. So this is just good economics. Carpooling. Carpooling it is. These leaf cutters are carrying their booty back to the colony, but they're not gonna eat the leaves. No, they don't actually eat these leaves. And you would think they would, because they're carrying literally pound after pound of leaf down this tree. But they actually turn them into a mulch on which they raise a fungus. They are fungus-eating ants. They're totally farmers. They are entirely farmers. In fact, they do everything you think human farmers do. And in case you were wondering what farm fresh fungus looks like. Just a piece of it. We dug some up. This is ambrosia for the ants. And they don't need anything more. This is kind of their power bar. It is. It's very nutritious. You want to try some? No, but I'd like to watch you try some. Well, let's see. It needs, uh, it needs a little chocolate. Oh, ow! Of course, ants don't just create farms. They make assembly lines, highways, and even underground cities get a variety of different sizes of workers with different shapes, and they're all built specifically to do certain tasks or jobs. So they're born with this identity. There are soldiers, nurses, sanitation specialists, highway construction workers. There are actually suicide bomber ants. The ant simply walks up to the enemy and explodes, spraying this toxic yellow glue over itself and everything around it and killing everything into a tableau right away. So that's right out of sci-fi. It doesn't even need any TNT. It just has it built into its body. With behavior this complicated, they must be pretty smart, right? Ants are not smart. In fact, if you watch an ant for any length of time, you're going to end up wanting to help it because ants are really very inept. 
what's amazing about ants is that in the aggregate, all of these inept creatures accomplish amazing feats as colonies. So and according to Deborah Gordon, professor of biology at Stanford, they do it all without a boss. In an ant colony, there's nobody in charge. There are no bureaucrats. There are no foremen. There's, there are no managers. There's nobody telling anybody what to do. Wait a minute. Don't ant colonies have queens? The queen does not give rules. She does not make proclamations. She just sits there and lays eggs. Being the queen would be the most boring job yeah. in the ant society. OK, so the queen isn't in charge. But ladies do rule the colony. Virtually any ant you ever see is a female. Males just mate once and die. So all these females survive and thrive together, all without a leader, which can be hard for us humans to understand. We put a lot of effort into thinking through how to organize some of the things that we try to do as groups. Ants don't put in any effort at all. They're pretty messy about it, and it works really well. Most ants, it turns out, simply follow the crowd. And now it turns out scientists are following ants to attack one of life's most frustrating experiences, air travel. So Southwest Airlines said, help us figure out the most efficient way to get our passengers on a plane. Right. And you said, I know, I'll use ants. Because I know they do complicated things with simple rules. Doug Lawson is a systems analyst at Southwest Airlines. And so what did you discover? Well, we discovered that there is a better order in taking your seat. Lawson used computer simulated ants to determine the most efficient way of boarding a plane, which turns out to be open seating. Southwest way of boarding without seat numbers is actually more efficient than when I board yeah. another airline and know exactly what my seat is? Right, when we simulated what the different airlines are doing, it turns out with uh, a signed seat, there's a one-third chance that you're going to ask two people to get up. Whereas open seating, since the middle seat is the undesirable one, generally that's the one that's last to be filled, which means only one person is likely to get up, the person sitting near the aisle. Did these ants have carry-on baggage? Were these ants cranky? <laughs> How did you account? Well, we, <laughs> yeah, we left out bad behavior. <laughs> So ants may not be smart, but they can be efficient. Something to ponder while waiting in the airport security line. Arguably, humans are too smart for the functioning of the whole society. It pays to be individually stupid. This is the wisdom of the crowd's idea. Basically, all those little ants with their mostly ignorant choices, out of all of that emerges smart society. All of which is to say, the lowly ant is actually pretty impressive. <laughs>